Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back with more Fake Grand Order stuff. So, today, as you can see here, I'm actually going to be talking about the JP version of the game because they started the countdown to the 7th anniversary and it's always a good time to kind of look ahead and see like, hey, what's going to be happening in two years? That's what today's video is going to be. I hope you like it. If you do, feel free to leave a like, comment down below, tell me what year, if you're actually playing on the JP, which I assume a decent chunk of people are. Actually, I wonder how many people are because of the changes to the Google Play Store, but maybe you play iOS and maybe you do the other things. Doesn't matter. If you play, tell me what you're expecting from the 7th anniversary. Um, after they gave us uh, a form of pity, basically anything is possible now. <laughs> So feel free to say whatever you think might be coming uh, for the seventh year down the road. And uh, yeah, subscribe to me if you want some more stuff. So anyway, let's go into it. So this is some pretty basic info stuff here. So this it started from the 21st and it goes into the 29th. Usually the anniversary is... Let's see... July... Yeah, it starts on the 27th, so... Chances are it would start on the 29th for this. That's usually when the countdowns end, whenever they start it. Uh, actually, didn't they, did they not do a countdown previously? Did they not do one last year? No, this has to be the commemorative countdown. And then, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. August 1st. Okay. So that would mean... Yeah, sometime in August. So this is the start of it. <laughs> Uh, and then let me see, what did they do a pre... they didn't do a pre-campaign here. Strange, why are they so... No, they did, they did. From the 5th and went all the way to the 26th. So who knows on this one? Anyway, let's continue. Would probably be the smart guess to bet sometime in August is the start of it. Oops, don't clear for you, okay, let's go back. So yeah, the login bonus. One, two, three, four, five apples and two tickets. <laughs> Probably not the most exciting thing. <laughs> Actively not very exciting. Limited missions, um, clear a hunting quest, clear a hunting quest basically all the time up until July 27th, one a day basically. The limited start dash bonuses, which go from the 21st to August 31st. This for a limited time, the seventh day start dash login bonuses are doubled. So it goes two quarts, five tickets, this, and I think this is only for people who, uh, no wait, what, no, start dash is for people who start the game off brand new, so you'll be getting all this by the end of it. Then this is the comeback for the people who have, uh, who are coming back, so they must not have been logged into the game before Jan June 23, 2022, and then they must have cleared Fuki before August 30th. It's basically the two conditions you need to get to come back for this. Total rewards, 30 cent quartz, this, 16 apples, 16 of that. How come they don't do 5 EXP? This is just 4 EXP. Or is it 5? Let me take a closer look. Okay, no, no, no. It's 4. That's weird. They should upgrade that to 5. It should be 5 EXP. Come on, what are you doing? Um, oh yeah, and then for this one, it is 50 cent quartz, 10 tickets. Yeah, yeah. Decent starting back for stuff. And then we have hunting quests, which I don't think we know. You know, we do know what they are. It's skeleton hunt. It's the only one we know so far. So we'll see what the other ones are later on. And then the summoning campaign. This is actually the most insane. I think it's the biggest bait that they've ever given out, which is depending on how you are, it's going to really depend. So they've done banners like this before where it has, and they show a bunch of summer units, but usually there's like some kind of caveat, like they're never on raid up. This is actually just all of them over separate days and divided by year. So it goes from year one, two, three, four, and five. And because six is getting a rerun, there's no reason to include it in a year. And then seven will obviously be its own thing. This is kind of crazy because I think this is the first time a lot of these units are coming back with specifically pity in mind. Um, it looks like it's only the part ones though, not the part twos. So you'll be able to get uh, some oratoria, basically all the oratorias, three of them. <laughs> three of the starting point and another saber face. The writer version, the Jean Archer, or Jean, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, um, the bunny ruler over here and then Kiara and I'm pretty sure a decent chunk of these are the first time they'll be able to be summoned on since pity has been released so if you are a big fan of any one of these which to be fair all of them have their own fans besides just their kit obviously 
a lot of these kits are crazy, still very good at looping and stuff like that, still very good. I think most people kind of don't. I think she ends up being kind of middle of the pack, but I really like her. I always liked her as a quick unit. She could definitely be improved in some ways, but I've always liked her, so it's going to be good depending on you, but she's very cool and nice. Um, I think she's probably the same thing would be true for Artoria Pendragon now, the ruler version. Um, hmm. But Kiara obviously is dummy good, as I've said previously in a video and stuff like that. And then you can also get the CEs, potentially the 2016 ones, Summer, please Summer Drake this year. Please do it. 2017, 2018, 2019, and 2020. Um, yeah, this banner, it's kind of, it's kind of crazy. It's a little bit, they usually don't do, they usually save them for download celebrations. I was actually fully expecting her to usually get on the download celebration. Actually, now that I look at this, is Okita not on here? That's, hmm. So yeah, some of these are missing the other four that they were included with, and in this case, they added a four. That's interesting. Why is it like that? Each summoning banner separated, even though they're overlatched, thus they have. Ah. Why did they do it like that? Interesting. Very interesting. But yeah, even some of these fours very rarely come back and are pretty nice. I always like Ruler Martha. She has come back. I really like uh, Ryder Mo. I think she's good. Um, I think Maeve ends up being very good, though I haven't actually used her in some ways. Tomoe after using her is very good, and the other ones are usually pretty solid for summer units and are very good. So yeah, if you have the care for any one of these 5 stars and you are planning 2 years ahead <laughs> when you have the potential to have pity, I guess the time to start thinking about saving would be now. Which is going to be really screwed up because like I said, this is the biggest bait in the world last year around this time is around the time which is something I had to start planning for which is unfortunate last year um, that's when they released the Lost Belt 6 units and that's also when um, the anniversary units were released and it was in general really crazy and it's still a crazy summoning time that you have to kind of plan ahead at least in this instance Morgan comes back plenty of times so if you don't catch her on her initial banner, you can, in theory, catch her in the other ones, unless you're a big fan of Morgan, and which I don't think the pity comes out before Morgan. You'd have to actually wait until the next rerun of the Morgan banner if you want to try and summoning her with pity on it. Crazy. Crazy, crazy. But yeah. Something to keep in mind. If you're a big fan of any one of those, it's always a good thing to kind of keep in mind and be like, hey, this is what's coming forward in the future. This is what I'm planning towards, which is what I do whenever they release a specific Quetz banner, which I also have to be planning towards. I think she was released sometime in 2022. I think they did a re-release of Quetz. The... Uh, was it 2022? I forget when exactly. Was it here? No, it wouldn't be Battle in New York. Mm, when did they release a solo? It, it was related to, I think, a strengthening or an interlude of some kind. One of the two. I totally do remember that they gave her one of some kind. But anyway, I digress. So yeah, it's the start of the 7th anniversary. Uh, I have no idea what they could potentially be doing. I have no idea what... There's obviously improve in terms of improvements to the game. The obvious one that everyone wants is the pity to be made even better. Maybe make it so you don't because on JP, if you're not a whale, there's no way in hell you're using any of the pity at all. There's just no way. They constantly release crazy banners. It's actually been kind of a pain in the ass to try and um, plan for them. Is because every other banner, it draw they drop units that are either fan favorites or extremely good in some capacity, or just crazy broken in a completely different way that you weren't expecting and stuff like that. So it's kind of hard to plan ahead, and it's also kind of hard to keep your stuff when all these units kind of get released like that. So I think a way to, if not drop the pity, at least make it so that they, they start giving out a lot more quartz at a time. It seems kind of ambitious, but again, I never even expected us to get pity. You know, in some cases, it's not the pity that's the problem, it's the amount of quartz given. And it's really funny, actually, because the balancing act that they have to have... <laughs> is if you don't know this the reason that they never want to give us a 5 gssr is because i think fago might actually have the most rarest five stars in 
gotcha history. If you, I guess, if you specifically look at it compared to another um, gotcha that's super big, uh, Dokkan being the big, big one, their SSRs are like dime a dozen. Like you get an SSR in Dokkan, who gives a shit? To be honest, even even their highest rarities, the LRs, sometimes some of those are just completely useless, and it's like. <laughs> actually kind of infuriating for certain new people starting out where it's like well i don't know if the highest covenant things are even good in Fago, you basically have to constantly fight and scrap for everything and so the highest rarity ends up being actually legitimately meaningful in some way because they're super hard to get five stars even with the pity and most of the time almost every single five star is going to help you in some way in being super crazy powerful compared to the threes twos ones and fours and that being said the fours threes twos and ones you've seen plenty of videos and the zero the one zero there's plenty of pe things where people are kind of easily able to finish stuff with those so it's kind of a thing of like yes in theory uriel can beat anything that super orion can beat but super orion just does it with such craziness and such ease that it's actually kind of you, you understand why one's a 5 star and the other one's a 3 star in that way. Even though both can complete the same challenges in theory, one is just so much better equipped for it. So yeah, Fugo ends up having this thing where it's like, well, our 5 stars actually kind of matter compared to other places. So if we devalue the 5 star, then we have to run into a problem where we have to eventually release a new rarity, right? Like I said, in Dokkan, SSR were the big thing, but then they had to go beyond that and they had to create a TUR. And then beyond that, they had to create an LR, and now and they probably need to create another rarity, to be honest. But it happens in every gacha, basically, where the five star eventually has to be kind of power crept in such a way with something better. And that hasn't happened in Fago in seven years. That's crazy. In no other gacha, I think, is like that, except for maybe, maybe Puzzles and Dragons is like that. No, even Puzzles and Dragons has like five stars, six stars, seven stars, eight stars, and then awakened versions of that. It's kind of crazy. So I don't know if they, what they would need to do with that. It's, I don't know if I want to live in a world where the five stars are easier to get, but there's something even above a five star that's even harder to get, if you know what I mean. A general increase in the actual rate of getting five stars and uh, four stars would actually also help. Maybe make it feel a little bit less like you have to constantly rely on the pity to do things. Because to be honest, <laughs> beyond a pity, what if they just actually made the rates slightly better? That would also be a good thing to have. And in terms of some other seven year stuff, mm, I kind of would like the ability to kind of give up certain craft essences for something beyond just mana prisms. But at that point, you're entering a different world of like then in two years the people in a would just hoard all their ce's and wait for the the big thing and stuff like that so not really anything realistically you could do but yeah in terms of game improvements it's minor stuff it's more quality of life stuff that's kind of what i want um in terms of a unit i don't know because it's usually story related and stuff story related is like i think the big the big one that is a story unit that hasn't been released is probably zeus I think there's probably a lot of things holding back Zeus being able to be summoned. But if they could figure out a way to do that, it would be kind of nice. I think he's the only Lost Belt King slash Queen who is unavailable. Every other single one is available in some way. So if they could figure out a way to <laughs> bring him over, that'd be kind of nice. And if it's not him, I don't really know who else it could be. I don't think they would ever do Melty Blood outside of a crossover. But to be fun, no, actually they totally could because we have characters from that universe where it's like, we could totally have that character still come over, but they don't have to be related. Like for example, Alkyard, is that how you pronounce it? The main vampire lady from Melty Blood. She was in Fate Extra as a Berserker. There's no reason for her not to be able to be summoned if she could be summoned in that game. And there was probably a lot of specific regulations like she wasn't specifically really under a master control uh, spoilers for fate extra by the way so there's ways to do that they could do could they could this be the time where we get the the priest smiling could could a certain priest make his way here i don't know it's tough like when you when you look at uh, the specifically all through anniversary it's always like big units but then it's also like, because this one was Vich, this year was Vich, and then this year, 
obviously. That's Castoria. And she was from uh, the Lost Belt 6, so they could do the same thing where it's a unit from Lost Belt 7 showing up early. This year, I believe it was uh, Little Vinch. Yeah, there we go. Leonardo da Vinci, but uh, Lily. And then this one we have... Well, this first of all, this is December. This year was... was this? this is the year of Scotty. And then this year was not Merlin. Or was it Merlin this year? Who was the second anniversary? There was no way it was actually Merlin. Uh, okay, there you go. Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, I was gonna say no, Merlin wasn't that. And then for the first year anniversary it was Wow, this is a I think it was the original Leonardo da Vinci. Yeah, there you go. The first original, original Vinci. So they all have been story related. So I think it would be wise to expect someone story related to show up again. Don't know who it could potentially be other than the ones that I've mentioned beforehand who have been in the story but haven't really been made playable. We'll kind of wait and see on that one. But yeah, that's the end of the video. Good luck to all you on JP who are going to be going for the seven year anniversary. This is going to be the roughest like time because like i said there's also after anniversary is going to be summer and depending on what certain things can be done for summer i've made my certain predictions of what i would like to see for summer um it could be it could be kind of crazy especially since now all the lost belt six units are available for summer units <laughs> just start the morgan the the morgan sweep can continue as she continues to be the most dominating fake Grand Order character since her release. Actually, funny enough, not since her release because it was actually a slow build-up. I think originally people more were into um... Ah, Grogu, obviously. No, um... Fairy Knight Tristan and Fairy Knight go in, but over time she kind of took over everything. But Man! Alright! Happy, good luck and saving to you. Kind of interested to see what the game's going to include. As always, this is the end of the video, so you can leave a like if you ended up liking it. Comment down below because I'm actually kind of curious to see what other people have to think would happen for the 7th anniversary. 7 is usually a pretty big number, and maybe it's because I'm a Dragon Ball fan, and I think 7 is supposed to be this holy god untouchable number. But I think 7 would probably mean something big would be coming along the way. I just don't know what it could be at this point. It would usually be related to original Fates Day Night. I would about to say a five-star coup, but then we already have a five-star coup. It's the Berserker version, but maybe the real version. Hmm. Who knows? But that's the end of the video, everyone. Until next time, see you guys. Bye-bye.